Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look at a really pretty cool, scarce uh, Luxembourg Semi-Auto Sniper FN-49. So the FN-49 of course was the rifle that FN produced, developed and produced just after World War II. This would eventually, actually fairly quickly, uh, transition into the FAL rifle. But there were a number of countries that were looking to upgrade their bolt-action rifles into semi-autos right after World War II, and for various reasons opted not to buy the surplus that was out there. A lot of these countries ended up just taking US surplus M1 Garands. But among others, Luxembourg decided to buy new rifles from FN. So they went with the FN-49, a fixed 10-round magazine, stripper clip fed. These rifles were available in a variety of cartridges. The Luxembourg military opted for 30-06. So that's what these two are in. And in total they would buy about 6,000 of these rifles. In fact 6,203 of them to be very specific, uh, not counting 100 for the gendarmerie. Uh, the first order was in 1950, they ordered 4,000 standard rifles. The second order was in 1952 when they ordered 2,000 more rifles of the AFN instead of the SAFN variety. So the, the second order was all for select fire rifles, that was something that FN added into this design. And in that 1952 order they also ordered 203 semi-auto rifles set up as snipers. Now as they came from FN they were equipped with cheek rests and optics mounts, like this guy, but not actually scopes. The Luxembourg military went ahead and ordered it scopes separately. Uh, from a Belgian company, however, called OIP. They were, uh, they, there were two different versions of scopes that were used. We have both here. We have an early pattern and a late pattern. And this would be Belgium's sniper rifle until the adoption of the FNFAL. Now, well, I tell you what, let's go ahead and take a look at the details of these things up close, and I'll tell you about the history of the scope mounts on the FN-49, because they weren't made by FN, they were made by a guy in Boise, Idaho. There's really not a whole lot that distinguishes these snipers mechanically uh, or feature-wise from standard production rifles, aside of course from the scope and mount. These will all have an AL, a uh, nice fancy marking on the top of the receiver for Luxembourg. The rifle muzzles were left bare, they don't have flash hiders or compensators or anything like that. They do have this black paint finish. They are serialized both on the receiver here and the bolt and the cover and the stock all here. Uh, the serial numbers for the, Bel for the Luxembourg order started at 1000, so their first 1000 through 5000 are uh, their, their first batch of semi-auto rifles, uh, 5001 through uh, 6999 or through 7000. Uh, are their select fire rifles, and then 7001 through 7203 are their scoped rifles. So if you find one with a scope set up, the serial number needs to be over 7000 for it to be correct and proper. FN did set these up with a cheek riser, because the line of sight on the scope is actually rather high in order to clear the iron sights, so this brings the shooter's uh, line of sight up. These are symmetrical, so they actually give you a little bit of offset to the side, which you don't really need. This is a center mounted scope. Uh, however, uh, either left or right handed shooters can use them with equal comfort. They're held on by two nice blue slotted screws there. That was done by FN at the factory. And then they have these Echo scope mounts. So uh, the mount itself, the bracket down here, was actually done by FN. These are permanently installed on the receivers. The top mount is detachable, and this was done by a company called, well the, the mount is called an Echo mount, and it was made by a guy named Herkner out of, as I said, Boise, Idaho. So Herkner was born in 1909 in Cleveland, and uh, out of high school he actually went to work for Warner and Swayze because his father was a shop superintendent there. By 1936 uh, he kind of oversaw the whole Pacific or the whole uh, New England region for Warner and Swayze, installing their machine tools for clients. Uh, during World War II, he went to work for an aircraft company, and then after World War II, he decided to set up his own shop, his own business. Uh, did that initially in Denver, and then moved to Boise. And one of the things he came up with was in 1945 a patent for this really cool type of detachable scope mount, and it's really quite clever. So. 
we have two thumb screws here. And if I loosen these up, ooh, that one's pretty tight. There we go. If I loosen these up, this scope comes right off, but it's got this really cool set of, uh, well, round interlocking surfaces there. And this thing is mechanically great. It comes back to zero extremely well. So well that this was a, you know, a commercial product that Herkner was offering here in the US for sale. And kind of out of nowhere, he got a, a request from FN to quote production of 1500 of these things, which is far more than he had ever made before. Uh, thought that was pretty cool. Ended up selling 1500 to FN, got a number of follow-up orders, uh, bringing the total to 2700 of these scope mounts that he sold to FN. And FN clearly thought it was good enough that rather than bother to come up with their own design, they just went ahead and bought these commercially from some guy in Boise. Now, like I said, FN made this mounting rail, because this is pretty unique and specific to the FN-49, certainly not anything like what Herkner had been making. The one difference between his commercial product and his military version for FN was just the size of the little thumb screws here. So uh, as he had been making them commercially, they had these rather small thumb screws, which are perfectly adequate. FN wanted them bigger, presumably, so they'd be easier to use with gloves and, and just, well, a little bit more idiot proof. So the military version has these large thumb screws, the commercial version has these smaller ones. There are two different scopes that you'll find on these rifles. They're both made by the Belgian company, a Belgian company called OIP. And they're very similar, but there is an early pattern, which is this guy with these rather distinctive adjustment knobs, and this one, which is the later pattern with the larger adjustment knobs. Now we have a, a the kind of a two-part thing here to discuss. First off, this is the pattern of scope that the Luxembourg military used. However, when Luxembourg surplus these rifles or got rid of them, they didn't sell the scopes with them. They actually kept these scopes and uh, adapted them to use on their FNFAL rifles. Did a little bit of uh, re recalibrating on the bullet drop compensator to go from uh, 30-06 to 762 NATO but kept these around. So when you find scopes on the Luxembourg rifles, they are almost always Belgian scopes, and both of these are Belgian military scopes. So the Belgians used both the first and second pattern. When Luxembourg placed their order, production at OIP had already changed to this later pattern, so this is what you'll find on those. If we take a close-up look, you'll see the, the sun visor on this is marked ABL, that's Belgian Army, number 1387. They made uh, for the Belgians, they made about 800 early pattern ones and about uh, 1,200 late pattern ones. On the Luxembourg versions, instead of ABL, these will just be marked AL, just like the receivers on the rifles, with a separate set of serial numbers that will run from 1 up to 203. Here are the rest of the markings. Sorry, a little hard to see with the light reflecting there. Uh, it's a 1951 production scope. They have the basically the, the model number, serial number there, and the company name, say Tir Elie, Tir d'Elie, which is French for uh, sniper scope, telescope, SC, yeah. And then it looks like they have repeated the markings in German, or in, uh, yeah, in German, I believe. And then the OIP logo there. These have a bullet drop compensator that's going to go from point blank out to 800 meters and then also have adjustments for windage. The early pattern scopes are basically the same. The ABL marking has worn off the sun visor on this one, obviously. Uh, much lower serial number. This is one of the early ones, so 458. It has the same BDC out to 800. There we go. There's the 800 marking. Also windage adjustments, but uh, they improve, you know, the, the larger adjustment knobs were an improvement, uh, and by the time Luxembourg was getting these, like I said, uh, they had the, the late pattern. Both of these have just a standard German post type of reticle. So on these guys, the scope mount is going to be the original Luxembourg mount. Uh, you can see, well, it's a little hard to see, these are permanently pinned in place uh, and non-removable. And then the scope and its mounting block 
uh, generally when you find these are going to be Belgian. Now it's easy enough to, discuss, to, to confirm that with the ABL mark versus AL. Uh, if you have a Luxembourg rifle and you want to get a Luxembourg scope, they are out there. Um, it's going to be tricky to find, but I have seen a couple in private hands. So I would suspect that uh, when Luxembourg started getting rid of the fouls, some of those scopes sneaked off. They'll probably be calibrated for 7.62 NATO, unless you manage to find one that somehow snuck out of the Luxembourg military before being recalibrated. Um, the, the iron sights are still usable underneath this optic, but it is a very quick detach, repeatable zero sort of thing. You'll note there's this nice oval cutout so that you can still get access to the, the lever here. Um, yeah, it's really quite a, a nice, effective scope mounting system. One last thing I should point out while I have you here is scope mount or a scope case for these. So of course, what do you do when you take the scope off? I mean, the whole point is to prevent the scope from getting damaged when you're gallivanting about with the rifle. So naturally, you have some sort of protective hard case to put the scope in, like this. Open that up, and we've got some nicely made uh, wooden mounting blocks in there. And this goes ahead and slides in, slides right in like so. And then there would have been a couple of tools here. I expect one of these two would have held a lens cleaning brush. There's probably an adjustment tool that would have snapped into that. And you can see we have a, a little rubber pad there, so we can clamp this down. And there you go. That hooks onto your belt, gives you a place to carry the scope protected. So these are of course very scarce rifles uh, in the United States today. My understanding is only 93 of them uh, survived, the rest being scrapped by the Luxembourg military. Not sure exactly how many of those came into the US versus being sold elsewhere in Europe. Uh, as we discussed, they didn't come into the US with their original scopes, but when you find them with scopes like this, they're generally found with Belgian scopes of the exact same model that Luxembourg used, so you're pretty close on there. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys have found this interesting. They're, they're really cool, scarce, I mean, who doesn't like semi-auto sniper rifles? So a big thanks to the uh, private collector who offered to let me do some filming on these two and bring them to you guys. Thanks for watching.